The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. It's Wednesday, November 22nd, 2023, the Thanksgiving holiday weekend ahead and prime time for surf fishing along the Jersey Shore. I'm Jim Hutchinson with a New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. I'm here at Charlie's Bait and Tackle in Normandy Beach this week, smack dab in the middle of the bass madness here at the Jersey Shore. Now, Pete and crew are all set up for their annual surf turkey event. It kicks off today, Wednesday morning. The registration was already uh, done Tuesday night. So hopefully you saw that video fishing forecast last week. Heard my message, got in here and got in on this tournament. The Surf Turkey will continue through uh, Sunday. They a big party on Sunday, right, you guys? Yeah. Saturday. Saturday. That's through Saturday. Pete just said it's Saturday night is a big party here. So if you're in town, uh, you want to check that out. That's a great uh, idea. Plenty of surf con contests, of course, continue along the Jersey Shore. Uh, if you have friends and family in town for this weekend's holiday, the LBI Surf Fishing Classic, of course, that continues all the way through December 10th. Uh, and that that's the next barrier island down to the south, of course. Uh, and that will continue through the 10th. It's always a great event. Uh, as a matter of fact, this week's main image, the title image actually comes from Frank Brown, who won the weekly Tsunami Prize in the LBI Fishing Classic for that very image. Now, first, let's take a look at the December edition of the Fisherman Magazine, because that's out this week. You'll find it here at Charlie's Bait and Tackle sometime later in the week. So if you're coming in here to gear up for the Thanksgiving here or at any of the tackle shops, pick up that December edition. It is our annual gift guide. We are moving towards Black Friday, of course. Black Friday means shopping for some. For the rest of us, it means fishing. But you will want to pick up that edition. It's got Jeffrey Duran on the cover, a solid North County striper. Uh, from uh, November, I thought it was a very festive choice for our holiday edition. Of course, we're getting a lot of photos up and down the coast uh, from folks getting in on the action right now. Now, of course, you've got your Hammaker Schlemmer catalog at home, your, uh, what is it, the Sharper Image, the one from Bass Pro Shops, are all lying around the house. Well, consider the December edition of the Fisherman Magazine, your version of that. Dog ear the pages, figure out what you want, because our staff went through and covered more than 60 products that we thought uh, were applicable to the holidays uh, coming up. Uh, so different gift ideas that you'll find here uh, in the region available for uh, Christmas, uh, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas Kwanzaa, if you will, whatever you celebrate. As far as catching through December and all the way into the new year, take a look at the table of contents on the local edition there in the New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition, because you will find everything you need. December Bluefin by Captain Jim Frieda. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. Northern Pike in the Garden State. Petey and I were just talking about Tom P, the wild man. Uh, he's got that in there. There's a look at how El Nino, we're in an El Nino season, how that may impact our fishing in the months ahead. Uh, also using the NOAA BDV viewer, uh, Wayne Young has been covering a series of the bathymetric data display, uh, uh, the, the, the viewing display, the BDV series. Well, he's got uh, some information in the December edition, how you can kick back in the colder months and do a little bit of scouting for the new year uh, to find some new wrecks. And of course, Nick Konachewski, as usual, covers a rundown of the lures you need for the rest of this season. Love Nick's articles, love taking a look inside his plug bag. Also check out my latest editor's log in the December edition. That's on page three. It's one I referenced in our video last week um, since we last spoke about Orsted and the construction work at Island Beach State Park. Well, since last week's video, I actually found from Larry Haina in the New Jersey DEP press office that all that work that's going on now at Island Beach State Park has nothing to do with Orsted. Not since Orsted made their Halloween announcement that they were packing up and running back to Denmark, uh, so to speak. They're just not working at the Jersey Shore. And of course, we've got other wind companies. Um, but yeah, this has been like pulling teeth uh, 
to get the government to acknowledge what the heck's going on there at Island Beach State Park. But according to Haina, he said none of the ongoing work at Island Beach State Park right now uh, has to do with Orsted in any way. He said that structure that we've been looking at for the last several weeks and you've seen going into the park, that is indeed being built near the swimming area for sewage pumping. Haina told me on Thursday, quote, initial construction activities began on October 13th. DEP is currently assessing the path forward to ensure compliance with all permit conditions and regulatory requirements. Seems odd since we've been tracking this, uh, this work since well before October 13th and uh, talking about some of the same contractors uh, who have had the Orsted contract. But that's what the state says. So that's the final word on that. Won't have to cover that and bother you right now until we find out otherwise. One last thought before you recycle that November edition of the Fisherman magazine before you swap out November for your new December edition. That was my friend Dr. Adam Aguiar in the main image of last week's video fishing forecast and he wrote a great Thanksgiving Day piece, a Thanksgiving Day massacre that he had gotten into last year not far from here. So make sure you review that November edition because it should talk a little bit more about this epic bass fishing, this striped bass fishing that we have right now all along the coast. Now this is the anniversary week of so many striped bass blitzes over the last 10, 15 years. So if you're able to sneak out Thursday morning before the turkey goes in the oven, uh, you might be well rewarded. And certainly Adam was last year, and I was just talking to Pete, he got himself into into trouble with the family because he was enjoying that Thanksgiving massacre along the brick beaches um, when he should have been home enjoying Thanksgiving. Now when I look at the NOAA marine weather forecast for this week, it is heaving Wednesday into Thanksgiving. Um, it lessens a little bit on Turkey Day though. And then Friday morning looks to be more of a striped Friday as opposed to a black Friday. I mentioned that before. Um, that's our extended uh, Thanksgiving leftovers family party for myself on Friday night. So I'll be out running these beaches someplace on Friday and looking to score as well. So hopefully I will see you out there. Offering wise, some days it's bunker being harassed um, with some of the bigger fish popping up on the outside, especially around uh, the outside. That's where you're throwing some of those pencils, right? Some of those fish, even when you see the blitzes, some of the bigger fish are out beyond the blitz. Or if you have some peanut bunker getting harassed, screaming through peanuts, cupcakes, even the adults, if they start screaming by and they're down the beach a little bit, that's where some of the pencils and even the gliders work real well. The pencils, uh, that's what did it for Mary earlier this week, someplace in Monmouth County another blitz someplace in the northern country during light northerly winds. Um, Wai Kong from Garnet Valley, Pennsylvania. This is a great clip. Look at this one. From the beaches of Ocean County last week said he had, quote, never seen stripers cruising the waves in front of my eyes. So this is a lot of what we're looking at. And this is a lot of what we've been trying to cover uh, over the last several weeks. When you stumble into one of these bunker busting blitzes in a Thanksgiving or uh, a Black Friday massacre, perhaps, you'll want the swim shads, the storms, the NLBNs, or the tsunamis, a whole lineup of the white tsunami swim shads on that back counter. Uh, yes to the pencils. Little neck popper happens to be my confidence lure. It's also good if you've got a crosswind north or south or even below and straight at your face uh, and of course the metal lips as well and when they're biting like this on that video that Y showed um, you, you often don't have to cast to Europe to get into the fish a, a lot of times they're right at your feet certainly something to experience Brittany Johnson of Brick just started surf fishing a few years ago got into her first blitz last week needless to say she too is hooked for life now the other offering that has resulted in quite a few uh, uh, good fish in times of blitzing fish and immediately after the blitz, as I mentioned, um, when those bunker have moved through rather quickly and you've got fish in the back just kind of picking up some of the cripples, you've got those spooks or those glide baits, the walk the dog top type of lures uh, that you want to throw on top. And from the looks of this image, that's what, was, uh, that's what Chase Fairbanks found uh, tossing late last week in the surf what he said was a 51 incher. So yeah, there's, some, there's a whole mix of class fishes some sublegals, your bonus fish, your slot keepers, and some jumbos as well. Sand eels, they're popping up along various stretches of beach. Uh, sometimes the predominant bait 
and the predominant bite. When bass are in there tight on these skinny little baits, tins and teasers, teasers and needlefish, avas or tsunami sand eels and teasers, you see the pattern here, make sure you have those teasers. I was checking the wall here, Petey's got a bunch of, uh, of bucktails, uh, perfect for the teaser rigs. Most every Jersey Shore tackle shop will find them. Uh, some of them have them right near the corner. But again, solid imitations. He's got the Bill Hurley's, and he's also got those tsunami sand eels when they're in close. And he's got the Ava jigs. Of course, the Ava jigs, you're gonna to wanna to pick the various tails. Sometimes the color doesn't matter, but sometimes it's the green, sometimes it's yellow, sometimes it's black. Match the hatch, that's key from Sandy Hook all the way down to the tip of Cape May, across the Delaware Bay, wherever you may find yourself this weekend or ever. There's one other that you don't ever wanna forget, the bucktail. You always wanna have a bucktail or two in your plug bag. In fact, I'm gonna tell you why. At least Jenny Ackerman is gonna tell you why. This week's Open Boat, Jenny talks about bucktail in the surf and why the bucktail should be your quote unquote, don't leave home without it lore for both the fall and the spring run. Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Open Boat. Today I'm gonna to be talking about one of my favorite lures that I never leave home without, the bucktail. Oh, <laughs> the bucktail. The buck <laughs> so why do I always keep the bucktail in my plug bag? I use it in the fall and the spring. The bucktail is an awesome and versatile lure. It's heavy, it helps navigate the water column. You can control where it navigates in the water column. And I've had great success with the bucktail when nothing else works. Prime example, we're in the fall run right now, waiting on peanut bunker. When those peanut bunker are here and there's bass blitzing on the peanut bunker, you're gonna be instinctually casting a top water. So that top water may not be getting the attention of the stripers. So you need something that gets in with the peanut bunker. That's when you throw a bucktail because that bucktail can get in right with the peanut bunker. You can feel as you're reeling in that bucktail, you can feel the peanut bunker freaking out around it. And then you're going to get hit because it's in with the bait. It's not above the bait. It's not below the bait. It knows where to be in the water column perfectly. Another thing with bucktails is They've been around for a long time. Literally, the Air Force used in World War II a little rescue kit, like had a raft and everything in it. It had bucktails in it. Because if these airplanes went down in the ocean, they needed a food source. So they had a bucktail to catch fish and survive. So not only is a bucktail helping the United States Air Force, it's helping you surf casters out. I use my bucktails in the fall and the spring. Fall time, I'll use them off the beaches, but in the spring, I'll use them, a heavier one, like a three ouncer, I'll use in some spots that have heavy current where I want that bucktail to get down and go behind the rocks to lose that current because big stripers will be hiding deep down trying to stay out of that heavy current. So I've had great success with bucktailing. The conditions with them don't really matter for fishing off the beaches. We've had days where it's nor'easter conditions. No one's fishing the beach. It's raining. The waves are ripping in. It's rough. And we're using this very bucktail catching stripers. It's, you're not, in those conditions, you're not gonna be using a top water. You can use your bucktail. So that's just a quick rundown on the infamous bucktail and why you should always have one in your plug bag. So make sure you guys get some. This one is the Gen X by S&S Jigs, the red head and the white body. And then this is a little trailer. It's called a JK Bait Trailer. They're really nice. And get the best out of your fishing experience with the best bang for your bucktail. Now, one of the video clips you saw in Jenny's segment this week was taken by me one year ago today in Belmar on my Thanksgiving Eve trip to the beach. 
Again, 2022, it's not a spot burn because this was last year, 365 days ago. And where the stripers blow up this week, well, I guess really that's anyone's guess. But hopefully you and I guess right. As we move down the beaches of the Jersey Shore, the LBI stretch has seen a couple of mini blitz conditions in the past week or two. Down into Atlanta County, speaking with Andy at Riptide Bait and Tackle, he said Ryan B. had a good catch and release fish in Brigantine over the weekend, which is a good sign as we head down into Atlantic and Cape May County. In his December edition fishing report from field editor Anthony Califano, which is available online at thefisherman.com, you'll also find it in the December edition when you pick up your copy, Anthony had spoken to a commercial buddy of his who said, quote, there certainly are 40 inch plus fish under the bunker pods on both sides of the three mile line right now. Of course, you're not allowed to fish on the east side of the three mile line for striped bass. You can't even target them but that's a good sign on the west side. Now, Anthony also told us that migratory stripers are in the area from Absecon to Margate at this point. One of the biggest problems every season that we find, those stripers coming down the beach, piling on peanut bunker or sand eels or whatever it may be, they seem to hit Barnegat Light, and from Barnegat Light, they almost travel due south, and they miss a lot of the stretches of beach in Atlantic and Cape May County. There are some fish in the wash for those who put their time in, and if your boat is still in, you have a good opportunity to get outside, inside the three-mile line, and go for some of those stripers. Uh, down on Delaware Bay, word is that Justin Morrison was live-lining spot off Bayview Beach over the weekend. He had a 47-inch, 35-pound catch-and-release striped bass. Now, this is some of the stuff that Eric Burnley talked about in his report for the Delaware and Chesapeake region. Um, Eric said this week that uh, big striped bass are as far north as ship John Light. He's hoping for good fishing in the mouth of Delaware Bay at this point and, and, the, and the coming days, uh, dragging some of those stretch plugs, uh, also drifting eels. Cape May rips anyone? I would love to hear about some bucktailed or eeled fish at the Cape May Rips, it's been a while, but maybe nobody has tried it, but if there are some fish inside Delaware Bay, I sure would like to see some more reports. Certainly by boat, you have better opportunities at this point to, to score striped bass. I've talked about that for weeks. Often they're just beyond casting distance, and certainly heading into Atlantic and Cape May County, you have better opportunities. Mullica Townships, Madeline Winterbottom, last week, Blue Water Candy, Striper Brella, uh, somewhere off the Jersey Coast. Mention the plugs, those stretches, those Rapala pull plugs, the mojos, the umbrella rigs, jigger rig, live line, or top water, give it a shot. With all that bait variety that we've talked about, peanut bunker, adult bunker, the cupcakes, the sand eels, of course, I've heard about some butterfish, you've got some of the rain baits around as well. That means you also have bluefin in the mix. December is usually a good time of year for finding bluefin along the Jersey coast. The folks at Fisherman's Headquarters in Ship Bottom said Paulie here landed this ghost on a Magic Tales Outfitters Who Head. Again, more action on that December bluefin action. In the December edition of the Fisherman Magazine, Captain Jimmy Frieda of Shore Catch Guide Service will get you all geared up to go chasing ghosts. Tog, of course, provide great opportunities for us this time of year. The bag limits just went up at the Jersey Shore last week, but we're still getting good reports on some of the jetties as well. Noel at One Stop Bait and Tackle said those jetties down there at Upseekin Inlet are still firing. Spoke to um, Tommy at Surf City Bait and Tackle. He said there's still plenty of blackfish being caught at the South Jetty at Barnegat Light. If you're heading down into Cape May County this weekend for the holiday weekend, you might want to stop at Hands to Bait and Tackle. Check on the availability of crabs because I'm sure there's some uh, some tog on those jetties down there as well if you're looking to score for the holidays. Off the beach, of course, we've got the tog fishing there. But earlier this week in about 50 feet of water, Captain Sam Racino aboard the Mary M out of Barnegat Light. They thought they had a 50 pound tog at the end of the line. Lo and behold, look at that, black drum. We always seem to see some black drum at some of these reef structures every year this time of year. Sometimes it's earlier, sometimes it's right around where we are now. Who knows, maybe some black drum, some channel, uh, channel bass, right? Some of those redfish, we talked about it at LBI last week. I'm still hoping to find out with some of those 
well, we'll call these still more exotic visitors. I'm hoping to hear of some catches of speckled trout down in Cape May County in the coming days as well. New Jersey edition subscriber Steve Leanhart said he and his buddy Robert Jacoin were out at Sandy Hook Reef in about 60, 62 feet of water this past Friday. Green crab on a jig caught this 12 pound tog. Now they caught and released this. It was caught by Robert. I gotta think if Steve caught it as a fisherman subscriber, it might have been brought in to check in for the Fisherman Magazine's Dreamboat leaderboard. Because I think of that because Steve is still in 10th place. He's still got a point. He's still getting a prize for a doormat fluke earlier this season. That 12 pound tog, if you had caught that, Steve, it would have looked real nice on the leaderboard. We still have a few weeks to go before the end of the Fisherman Magazine's Dreamboat Fishing Challenge. For an update on the leaderboard, let's check in the studio with my buddy Tim Smith. After such a wild week last week, and with first place changing hands, it's hard to believe that we didn't see any new entries this week. But with only eight days left in the tournament, we are set up for a thrilling finish. Let's see if anybody can knock Bobby Cifarelli down with a heroic catch in the last quarter. The top three looks like this. Norman Bouchard now holds third place with 17 points. Kyle Krause was knocked out of first place and now stands in second place with 30 points and Bobby Cifarelli with his Titanic tog now stands alone in first place with 33 points. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a new 21 foot Steigercraft center console powered by Yamaha along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. If the holiday weekend ahead has you traveling west through the woods, over the hills, to Grandma's house we go, well, why don't you sneak out and enjoy some of the freshwater opportunities in New Jersey, in Pennsylvania, in Delaware, throughout the region. For a freshwater update, let's check in with my man, George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, I can almost smell that turkey cooking, but let's get to a few fishing tips before we dive into that turkey. You know, lots of guys are out in the woods this time of year, but a bunch of guys are still out in the water and really scoring big with some of this fall time fishing. A lot of folks checked in, believe it or not. We had Nick Picone check in. He's out hammering some of these big old smallmouth. And a couple of other guys, like my good friend, Glenn Key, he's an FLW co-angler, and he was out in the lower Susquehanna uh, getting in some really chunky bronze backs as well. Now, Nick said, or Glenn said, that, uh, that the green pumpkin tube was the winner for him. But he also said, hey, George, don't tell anybody. Uh, I guess we'll take that one back, but green pumpkin, guys. Also, Tim Keebler out on the Delaware doing the same thing. He's getting a bunch of those smallmouth. He said the leaves are a bit much to manage, but the smallmouth sure make it worthwhile. Now, going elsewhere, back up a little while in Palm Pack, uh, you know, Will Grouper and Fisherman X both outscoring big with some of these freshwater landlocked stripers. So good fishing there as well, not just down the Jersey Shore. And also in Beltsville Lake, you know, we had guide Josh Taylor out with some guests and they were scoring big with some stripers as well. And he said the smallmouth fishing was also excellent. Now, if you're still looking for some of those large mouths, we had Rich Bates check in from Lake Ariel. He said he was out using a husky jerk and he got about 15 bass right along the weed line, right about where they should be this time of year, feeding up for that winter bite. Well, talking about feeding, I'm gonna go get ready to hit some of this turkey. I hope you guys are out enjoying your Thanksgiving holiday. But from Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. For higher boats at the Jersey Shore, the charter boats, the head boats, of course, they're sailing for striped bass when those fish are in tight. But they're also heading out for blackfish as well as black sea bass, porgies. There are also some cod in the mix as well. So if you're prepping for the holidays, you celebrate with the, the Feast of the Seven Fishes, 
put some in the freezer coming up. Uh, a good head start on that holiday freezer can be found by fishing out of any of the ports at the Jersey Shore right now. Pick up that December edition of the Fisherman Magazine. You'll find the latest, greatest uh, run of reports and you'll also find out where all those boats are sailing from, what they're sailing to, what they're sailing for, and when they're sailing right now. All the information is in that Fisherman Magazine, which is why I add that the Fisherman Magazine makes a great gift for the holiday season, especially this week with our special uh, through the holidays or for the next couple of weeks at least. Uh, $29.95 gets you a full subscription to the Fisherman Magazine. You also get a $20 gift card for shore hold products. Those are the boat cleaning supplies, the buffers, the waxes, the polishers, all the cleaning stuff that you need uh, perhaps right now for the winter layup or you'll need it in the spring when it comes time to launch the boat again. And who knows, uh, I'm not gonna say anything. If you get the subscription for a friend, by all means, keep the $20 gift card for yourself. Of course, if you don't have to lay up right now, then don't. Armando Chavez says a lot of folks are zooming right by him to get in on that ocean boat, uh, that ocean bite. Armando said those tasty turkey day fish are right there in the bays and rivers right now. This one 30.75 inches uh, right there in the keeper range. Take note of Armando on his boat. Don't forget the brand new regulation here in the state of New Jersey. You got to have those PFDs uh, right on the smaller center consoles. What is it? 26 and under? 23 and under? Uh, 26 and under, Pete said. 26 feet and under, you need to wear that PFD. This is the Mustang survival jacket right here that's a little bit more comfortable to wear. I probably put it right over my microphone, didn't I? It's a little bit more comfortable to wear than that, uh, than that, that ungodly orange unit that you probably have. So you wanna pick that up. He's got them here, pete has got them here at Charlie's Bait and Tackle, uh, $139.99. You got the blue automatic and the gray and red manual. Whether you're catching and releasing them or looking for that key Keeper slot fish for the to turkey day table, uh, or maybe both. I'm doing both this week. It's, it's time for my Thanksgiving harvest, my annual harvest. But it is time to hit the beaches this week. That's especially true when fish are up tight to the beach, filling the gang at the tackle box, showing off this image this week. It's what I love about the Thanksgiving week. The kids have off from school. Families come together for a little feast while also sneaking out for a few laughs and a tug on the line. Family feasts, football, love my football on Thanksgiving Day, and of course, a little bit of fishing. Giving thanks to the Jersey Shore Bounty, this incredible fall run that will continue, hopefully well into December. And also I give thanks to you, my friends, for tuning in to us every week here at thefisherman.com. Get on them this week. I hope to see you on the beach come Friday morning.